Hi guys, can you hear me? Okay, this sounds good. Hey, I'm Peter Loop. I'm the uh, um, principal technology architect uh, for the Finical product. So I'll explain Finical Edge Verb Infosys in a little bit. Uh, but uh, right now, I'm going to and, and this talk is really about uh, APIs and, and interfaces. But rather than show you our APIs and all those sort of things, I wanted to just talk about what we can go do with them. And so. Uh, you know, I'm always looking for sort of clever technologies that you can go use or ways that you can cut corners. So this is one of those demos that I hope you go try it at home because it's not, I'm not trying to show you Finical product or Infosys product or something like that. I'm showing, uh, I wanted to show some open source technology that I think is going to make a lot of things easier. Uh, you know, I look at, uh, we are a core banking product. How many of you guys are in the market for a core banking product? Come see me if you are. We, uh, we have a, a very good one. But uh, you know, with all of these major enterprise applications, you really not need to talk about development on the edge and the development on, uh, um, you know, protecting the core, but still being able to innovate. Uh, and there's a whole set of tools around uh, the Internet of Things, and it's possible to talk about marrying those two things up. And so I'm going to talk about that a little bit today. Uh, first, you know, what is Infosys, what is Edgeverb, what is Finical, and, and what the whole things are. You know, Infosys is that classic uh, Indian garage company where six, seven engineers started with $250 and is now a $9 billion company with around uh, 180,000 employees. Um, about... 35% of the revenue comes from financial services companies, and so we're involved with most of the big banks that uh, you look at. Um, Infosys you traditionally think of as a consulting company or uh, you know, providing services, uh, but they do have a product group where we do go build products, and this is where the Edgeverb products come from. Uh, and inside that Edgeverb product group, well, we have really two lines of products. We have the Finical Core Banking product, and this is your typical universal banking solution. We do have a payments platform. This is very modularized. Uh, we are proud that it's, a, you know, it's running the largest bank in the world, which is the Bank of India Post, uh, with uh, 7 million users right now. Uh, very, very big, high-scale operation. Uh, excuse me. Uh, but, uh, you know, it has most of those capabilities. So we do have an integration layer in there, and we'll take advantage of it today. We also have the edge solutions. Uh, we have Trade Edge which uh, it facilitates trade, procure for procurement, uh, credit finance, and Assist Edge, which is a very cool product in terms of uh, you know, call center help built into your applications, which provides you know, instant dial-up and uh, a person on the line or a person over the web if you want to do that. But that's our core product. Um, the Finical Core uh, Universal Banking Solution is a pretty comprehensive solution, but if you look at the worldwide, about 16.5% of the adult banked population is running on a Finical system somewhere in the world. Uh, very big uh, in, a, in uh, many of the economies, relatively uh, new in, in the United States, uh, but we're working on doing that. We're an industry le le leader, 450 implementations, 84 countries, uh, and things like that. Some of the, the logos. Um, one of the big things that we are, uh, Vishal Sikh is, is, came over as now our CEO, and one of the big things he's pushing is this re renew and new idea. So, you know, how do we keep the core of things relatively solid, but how do we facilitate functionality and innovation on the side? And, the, you know, the, the innovations that you are focusing on are a couple of things. I mean, you're, you're, you have a mindset of innovate, focus on innovation, and if you're doing that, you need tools to support innovation. Design thinking is a big part of what we're doing. We have several hundred thousand people now trained in design thinking methodologies. So you go through one of our workshops, you see people slapping things up on a board, and that you know, talks about agile development and rapid development, and rapid prototyping, and how do you go build these things very, very quickly. Uh, we, deal a lot of, uh, we deal with a lot of partnerships and startups in what we're doing. Uh, we're involved in continuous improvement, and since we're a worldwide company, we always have to worry about localization and what we're doing. The tool I'm going to talk about today, and the demo I'm going to show you is probably a little bit above Hello World, so don't get too excited. Uh, but I wanted to, I mean, I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, it's a tool called Node Red, which is a, you know, a, a lightweight runtime extension built on top of Node.js. Uh, this came from uh, IBM's Emergency Technology uh, tool set. It's an open source tool. If you go to nodered.org, you can see uh, a lot about it. Um, we are a pretty active um, participant in adding to this code. If you go to the Edgeverb GitHub site, you'll see a bunch of nodes that we've added uh, for what we're doing. But this is really an internet wiring tool. And 
it was really designed for a Raspberry Pi device. So why is a guy doing core banking looking at Raspberry Pi, you know, Raspberry Pi type device tools in what we're doing? And what I'm doing is it provi you know, it's a browser-based tool. It's very fast to deploy something that you build in a single click. And everything is, is JSON-based. So you know, it's, it's, it's what you're looking for in a modern app. And so when I go through the demo, uh, which uh, I'll do here in a second, we can go see that. Um, Wanna, in fact, I go switch over to the demo of what we're doing. So this is Node-RED, uh, very simple to go install. What you do is, is you're going to have a bunch of nodes and you're just going to go connect them. So we can inject something or catch something or get the status something, look at uh, an HTTP socket. We can go, you know, these are all inputs that we can get and we can get outputs. So we'll use a couple of those outputs and inputs in the, in the flow we're going to build. We can do simple functions. They can be very complex functions. Uh, we can do triggers and delays, uh, but you can also look for social media and email. You can create Twitter feeds off of this. Very, you know, it's an event-driven architecture. So it's as simple as, ah, I'd like to you know, listen for some Twitter feeds. Excuse me. You know, let's just go drag this in here. And uh, you know, I can now go wire this up to Mango, MongoDB. I can go click on here, you know, put in my credentials to go get stuff. I can put some filters in here and now uh, and just go deploy this, and I'm doing this very, very quickly uh, into uh, a database. In this case, you know, this, is, this flow was very simple. I was just going to show, excuse me, show, you know, doing a timestamp into a, into a database. But uh, you get the idea that these can be uh, very powerful with a couple of things like that. I will also point that uh, these nodes can be created. So we've uh, created nodes to tie to loopback and, and everything like that. So let me go through the, 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 the model that we're doing. And it's, it's a relatively simple model. And I apologize, the screen resolution has, has shrunk this all together. But we're going to start. Okay? And you always start every flow with a start. One of the things we're going to be doing is we're going to be listening for an event inside of the finical transaction. In this case, it's going to be a direct deposit. Uh, some activity happens, an event happens. We're listening for that. And that's going to trigger this flow. We're going to parse the details. You know, you know, you always get a message. You're going to have to change the flow in some way, shape, or form. But if you look at that, you know, that's a sim some simple JavaScript to go uh, format that in a particular way. And uh, I can pull it out. You know, we're just listening, adjusting some lengths, you know, returning the message. You know, 21 lines of, of very simple code in what we're doing. Um, and then we're going. What, the scenario we have here is. For high-valued customers, I'd like to send them off and to trigger some other activity. So in this case, I'm just going to write it to a database if it happens to be a high-value customer who does a deposit transaction. I'm going to take it out of uh, the event that's happening in, in the Finical, and I'm going to put it into a MongoDB database just to, to store it. But I could easily send off a Twitter feed, or I could send some sort of other activity. Now, this node happens to just explode out into another small node. And really what we're doing is, so we've got this event listening. Uh, for a, for a, for a, for a, an activity that's happening. Now, for what I want to do in the database, I need not only that, ah, the person made a deposit, but what's their balance inquiry? And that's not part of the deposit transaction. So I'm going to have to do a call back into the database using one of our APIs to go do that. So here it is. Here's the finical hook. Here's my, uh, my simple balance query response. I'm going to append that to a file. I'm going to parse the header because you're always parsing data back and forth. And I can prepare that for analytics. In this case, I'm going to put it in the debug window um, so we can see it right here. As you can see, noth nothing up my sleeves. Nothing has happened. But as we do that transaction, that will, uh, that will happen. And then this node just takes us back to this one. So you can nest a lot of these if you want to. And there's the end, and there's the right into the database. This is, you know, obviously, you're going to do something way more sophisticated than this. But this, you know, I created this whole thing in just a few minutes, pulling, dragging, dropping, and things like that. So that's what I'm getting excited about, is something that allows me to rapidly prototype. And I could potentially uh, uh, elevate this into production, or I could go and um, you know, uh, use it as a model for what we're doing because everything that's done is JSON, and I can go import that into something else if I like to. So let's go into the the core business transaction, and we are going to go do a, de a cash deposit. And this is not the fancy mobile screen or anything like that. This is a teller doing all of this, so you get to see 
all sorts of, of things, but we're going to do a cash deposit. We're going to uh, do a single cash deposit. We'll do it for a certain amount. The account ID in this case, I know who it's gonna be. I know you're all at the edge of your seats. How about an amount? Do I hear an amount from the audience? Thousand dollars. That thousand's easy to hide. So how about a thousand and one? We said one thousand and one dollars. Let's go. We'll add and view the summary. We'll say who's paying to who. And we'll accept that. So let's uh, submit the transaction. Wow! Um, anyway, so all of that has happened. We'll go into node red, we'll run debug. And there you can see, there is the $1,000 uh, $1, for that account. Then we went on to go and do some additional information to get to, to, to populate the account balance and everything like that, and that has been written to a database. Nothing up my sleeve. If I had more time and more confidence, I would have done the whole demo for you or written the whole demo for you as we went. But if you, if you think of the power of that type of stuff, it's, it's, you know, it, it uh, drives a lot of the stuff we're going to do. So we have a cool product. We have a nice API, but the important thing for all of you guys is what do you go do with those things? And this is a tool I think is uh, valuable to go do it. It's open source. Go, go take a look at it. I think uh, you'll have some fun. Thanks.